Another year of metal come and gone. Merry Christmas, you filthy animal. These are my favorite metal albums of December 2023, and we're starting with Orbit Culture and The Forgotten. Just six months ago, I was praising this band's latest LP, Descent, but frankly, these cut three songs for this follow-up EP may be better than anything on that album. They managed to hit as hard as a sledgehammer while still leaning heavily into their progressive side. While We Serve and Sound of the Bell both provide plenty to chew on over their runtimes, while The Upheaval is a more focused punch to the gut. For just 19 minutes of music, you get a solid standalone experience with plenty of twists and turns rather than just feeling like less interesting leftovers. Then we have Cryptosis with The Silent Call. <laughs> This may only be two new songs, but after flooring me in 2021 with Bionic Swarm, an album that made my best of the year list, I could not have been more excited to hear more. And once again, these Dutch musicians deliver on top-notch technical thrash metal with a sci-fi twist recommended to fans of Vector. Both of these new tracks are stellar, and the two live tracks both sound great and act as a further reminder that they have not lost any steam. One of my favorite new bands to watch, and I can't wait to get another full length, hopefully in the near future. Then we have Therion with Leviathan 3. <laughs> Swedish symphonic metal band Therion are back with the final installment of their Leviathan trilogy they began in 2021. Putting out an album a year would be difficult for most bands, but given the scope of these arrangements, from the layered choir to the explosions of organ, it's pretty goddamn impressive just how well this all comes together. It's a huge step up from part two, which frankly I didn't care much for at all, and I'd even say it's a much more focused and consistent listen than part one, which I enjoyed quite a bit. Regardless, from the ripping guitar solos and pounding beats to the more classy operatic elements, it's clear that even after 35 years, this band can still deliver a truly epic experience. We still have plenty more albums to go, but just a reminder that if you're enjoying the video, hit the like button and comment below your favorites of December. But next up, we have Lies with Mind Pollution. Time for one last D-beat infused bit of high energy metallic hardcore to wrap up 2023. This Dutch band absolutely shovels the distortion down your throat, packing more violence into songs two minutes or less than most can in ten. <laughs> Lies have played shows with the likes of Hatebreed and Sick of It All, and if you dig that kind of music at all, you should definitely check this thing out. No bells or whistles, just supremely pissed off hardcore fury that takes it straight to the pit and doesn't let up until it's over. Then we have Health with Rat Wars. I'll take any scrap of industrial music I can get these days. Formed around 2005, this LA band has been dropping a variety of sounds over the years, including a collab album with the likes of Poppy, Lamb of God, and Nine Inch Nails, and even the entire soundtrack for Max Payne 3. This latest effort toys with both the softest and heaviest sides of their sound. You've got hard hitters like Future of Hell and the Like Rats infused Sicko, but also driftier stuff like Unloved and Ashamed. And always complemented by the same quaalude melancholy vocals. A little softer than what this skinny puppy fan would prefer, but still good stuff. Then we have Omega Diatribe with Deviant. The Hungarian heirs to the Meshuggah throne are back for more hard-hitting aggression. If you ever needed a band to get you bobbing your head, this would be among my top picks. And with this fifth album, they only continue to perfect the art of the groove. Ah! 
But what really makes Omega Diatribe one of my favorite modern groove metal bands is their attention to overall album dynamics and atmosphere. They really know when to slow things down and dial back the volume and when to crank things back up to 11. I could not stop listening to this thing and once more it's highly recommended for fans of things like Living Sacrifice. Then there's Within Destruction with Rebirth. One of my favorite modern deathcore crews really bringing the heat with this new EP. I've enjoyed the more melodic metalcore inspirations on their last two albums, but it's also nice to get some pure violence in the same vein of the records that got me into them to begin with, like Void and Deathwish. <laughs> Pig? And despite pulling back on some of the more dynamic elements they've been experimenting with, I really appreciate the little extra touches of atmosphere on tracks like Ethereal Wrath and Queen of the Moon. Also love the guitar work on tarnished and gnarly vocal guest spots from members of Distant and Signs of the Swarm. Nothing too surprising here, but if you just want some rock solid deathcore without any bells or whistles, you should enjoy Rebirth. Then there's Full of Hell and Nothing with When No Birds Sang. <laughs> Full of Hell have yet to top the perfection that was trumpeting ecstasy in my opinion, but with this new collab they continue to show that they aren't content being a one-trick pony. Really feeling some old Lord Mantis energy coming through on Rose Tinted World with the mixture of Black and Sludge, Doom, and more extreme influences. But then the Nothing influences really flip things on their head with the drifty shoegaze that ends up dominating the majority of this album. Also picking up on some comparisons to Portrayal of Guilt, but really, if there was a record that made the highs feel sky high and the lows feel low, given their stark contrast, this is that record. And more than anything, it just makes me more excited to hear where the experimentation takes them from here. Then we have the Seafloor Cinema with the Seafloor Cinema. Something for those here willing to give in to something a bit more melodic, the Seafloor Cinema feels like a cross between Dance Gavin Dance, A Day to Remember, and Coheed and Cambria. And while it's definitely pretty sappy, I can't deny how catchy it is. To me, this is the perfect example of how to go right up to the line with poppier vocals without giving into some of its more annoying tropes. Furthermore, Justin's vocal performance is absolutely pristine alongside those sparkly, mathy guitars, highly recommended to fans of Seder in particular. Then we have Kralis surprise dropping Mass Cathexis 2, the Kinetic Infinite. I recently said in the Discord that it feels like Kralis is trolling to see just how chaotic and inaccessible they can get before the fans stop coming back. <music> Suffice it to say, the unpredictable churning rhythms and atonal guitars will not be for everyone, but that said, I actually think they've managed to produce one of their most dynamic, engaging, and memorable albums to date. The performances here are so impressive and I especially appreciate the level of variety, like Liquid Remembered Vessels comes out of nowhere with some almost Voivod vibes while Let the Wind Take Them just feels like a heavier take on Rush. There's even a few catchy hooks to be found. I still find the weird jazz phrasing of Imperial Triumphant to be more rewarding overall, but there is something undeniable about Kralis' talent and I think this may end up being among my favorites from them. Then we have Unprocessed with And Everything In Between. <laughs> If Animals as Leaders had vocals, Loathe was more progressive, or Sleep Token wasn't cringe. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Sorry, I had to make that joke one last time this year. In any case, Unprocessed is the perfect example I point to when I talk about infusing, again, a popular vocal performance into heavier music without sounding lame. Sorry, 
It certainly doesn't hurt that the vocalist has an incredible voice to begin with, and I love how well they navigate between complex displays of progressive instrumentation, especially on the bass, and super heavy explosions of screaming and distortion. Highly underrated band. Then there's Omnium with War for Peace. If you bow your head, you may as well be dead. Another banger EP, Gothenburg Sweden may be the world capital for melodic death metal, but these guys are a death thrash band through and through. The energy is definitely at 11 and guitarist vocalist Berno shreds it up with fun and flashy riffs every bit as impressive as the likes of Ex Mortis. I just covered these guys in my latest Best of Bandcamp reaction video, and these three songs were already enough to feel like they warranted a little bit more exposure than that. Those whittly woo guitars, sick bass grooves, and unstoppable drums make me very excited to hear more. Then there's Ozaya with Kairos. <laughs> This up-and-coming deathcore crew is back already hot on the heels of their Kronos EP earlier this year. Unfortunately, I was not able to include this or Within Destruction in my 2023 deathcore albums tier list due to timing, but I'm glad to share it here. I can hear the continued growth in both aggression and atmosphere. <laughs> Pummeling slams and breakdowns are mixed nicely with stretches of very blackened sounding menace, and those rolled R's on the inherited sorrow are a nice touch on top of the already solid vocal variation. Still a little meat and potatoes for this relatively picky deathcore fan, but it's trending in the right direction, and that kind of fit for an autopsy turn of closing track Hughes Refract makes me excited to hear this band's future too. Then we have Verathron with The Crimson Temple. This Greek black metal band has been around since the 90s, but generally lingering in the shadow of the much more well-known Rotting Christ. Both bands incorporate a similar melodic approach to the genre that the region has become known for, and frankly, I think this is much a stronger release than The Heretics was. Verathron very adeptly brings some of that classic 90s energy, but with a perfectly balanced modern production job. One that fully captures a stellar union of infectiously groovy guitar lines and folky atmospheric keys. As far as more traditional black metal goes, this is easily one of the better releases this year. So before I get to my top pick, I had actually just finished editing this video when I was presented with two more records in need of inclusion. The first is Inertia with The Human Element. Inertia was actually the first group I ever interviewed for this channel back when it was more of a podcast format. And while I still wish they had either dropped this earlier this year or at the beginning of the next, I'm just glad to see them still kicking. This is that super techy, aggressive mathcore that got me into the genre to begin with back in the 2000s. <laughs> If I recall, guitarist Khalil is a formally trained musician with a degree, and it shows. This dude could play in anything from the Dillinger Escape Plan to Animals as Leaders to Beneath the Massacre with his level of dexterity. Combine that with killer drumming and some very death metal vocals, and this could be an album people from across genres could enjoy. And then we have Psycho Frame with Automatic Death Protocol. <laughs> This EP was strongly recommended in the comments of my 2023 Deathcore ranking, and man, am I glad that I listened to it. This is actually the second of two short releases they put out this year, but that quantity of output doesn't seem to have hurt the quality in any way. In fact, this may be the heaviest thing I've heard all year. Just sheer brain-dead brutality from the violent guitars and eardrum-shattering snare tone to the appropriately psychotic vocals. Think the cleansing era suicide silence but recorded in an institution for the criminally insane. And then my favorite album of December goes to Executus with the Black Throne of Chaos Abandoned. I feel like every year there is a big heavy hitter album that drops right after I finalize my best of the year list, and for 2023, 
this is that album. For all those same reasons I've been raving about Necropanther, Executus also bring that same peak era Skeleton Witch energy with all of the riffs, and that is absolutely my shit. <laughs> Thank you to the audience for this one because it completely slipped under my radar and would have been missed completely if I hadn't seen so many recommendations for it. I love the give and take of the community we've built here and it seems appropriate to end the year on an album that you gave to me. Y'all check out this playlist to see more of my monthly picks or this one for my best of the year rankings. Thank you for another incredible year and special thanks to the patrons over at patreon.com slash metal trenches. But that'll do it for now. That pretty much does it for the year and I will see you in the trenches.